103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, September 5th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. How are you? It's, it's me, the Wombat, and the four ducks. Quack, quack, quack. That was only three. <laughs> Hello. And our guests today are John Richards. Hello. Hello. Red Pirate Higgs. Howdy. Arr, howdy. And George Brown, the two and a half. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. Hmm. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. One bet. What are we on about today? Today we're going to be talking about good ideas from bad people, <laughs> and I think maybe we'd even get into vice versa. Is it possible to get good ideas from people who may not necessarily have the best lifestyle or best role models, and are they always tied together? And what can you extract from the two? But before we get into it, we're going to throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. All right, come be me captain. I shall not want. He maketh me to float in salt water. He steereth me through glassy seas. He filleth my bowl. He steereth me through the straits of noodliness, for goodness sake. I, though I sail through the heaving of tempestuous waters, I will fear not sinking, for thou art with me. Thy mast and thy rudder, they comfort me. Thou preparest a feast before me in the presence of me mates. Thou quenchest my thirst with grog. Mm. My goblet runneth over. Truly, past and grog shall follow me all the days of me life, and I will dwell in the galley of the quab forever. Rob. Rob. Guys, I want to catch up with everyone before we dive into it. We're going to start with Dread. You got a shirt on. I know it's radio, but man, walk me through what the shirt says. Sure. It says, think while it's still legal, but the words in think are uh, thorium, indium, and potassium. Nice, nice. Yeah. Classic elements, classic uh, elements. Also, Dread with the correction from last week, offline, I, or while I think, I don't know if it was on the air, but we had a conversation about Schrodinger's yes. cat, which always irked me as a kid, because I always thought Schrodinger's cat had this, I think I saw a TV show with like, Penn and Teller, where it was like the sexy version of history always overtakes the real version of history. <laughs> and they talked about Schrodinger's cat and they were like, he didn't even come up with that idea. That's just an argument. Some other scientists came to make fun of him, And then he just got labeled with that for the rest of his life. And it was sad, but no one ever knows the name of the guy who made that joke, but we remember the name Schrodinger. So like at the end of the day, Schrodinger won. And I'm like, that's baffling. I had no idea it was like that. Totally not true. <laughs> Dread, you sent me the link and I appreciate you yeah, helping me yeah. out with that. So, and it, so it was Schrodinger that came up with that uh, kind of thought experiment to explain his position. Hmm. And it was actually Niels Bohr who came up with the Copenhagen interpretation, uh, which was out of his uh, physics uh, lab up uh, where Copenhagen is. <laughs> Very cool. So there you but go. Good thinking. You inspired a good thought. You helped me get rid of some false ideas and got yeah. closer to truth ideas. So I really appreciate that dread pirate. Awesome. John Richards, you're not looking any pinker today than you did a few <laughs> days ago. What's going on with that? Thank heavens. Yeah. I, actually, I think that the cat one, because oh. it was in two positions simultaneously. That's sure. got to be a win. That's got to be a if win. Not, if not a win-win. <laughs> oh geez and we're starting early today john how you been and how's well, your interviews been going on free thought well, like like dread i also have a shirt on uh, <laughs> but it's got no no atomic symbols on it at all is that a, a pocket pen protector you got uh, in your front pocket that's, there that's, no, my phone. Oh, that's your phone i, okay. I bet you if we did an eds analysis on your shirt we'd find some potassium <laughs> Probably. Yes. Yeah. So this isn't actually just my phone. It's also my memory. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I Roger that. Okay. So what have I been up to? Well, I've been, I've been in the pink because I, 
So I held this uh, free thought hour. Lots of you have been on my free thought mm -hmm. hour, so you know what it's about. And I had uh, Bethany Carter, who was lovely. Yeah, a good and... friend of the show uh, and a personal friend of mine. Met her up in Nashville at the, uh, well, gee, Secular... Uh, uh, Larry, help me out. Secular Alliance? Uh, what's the atheist church called? Help me out. Oh, boy. Oh, um... um... Okay. Sunday, yeah, assembly. Sunday, Sunday assembly. assembly. Very good. Sunday assembly of Nashville. Yeah. That's where we. I was were. thinking yeah, of the Secular met. Student Alliance. There you go. Thanks, mm -hmm. but Sunday assembly for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any I know the right? guy who set up the Sunday assembly. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. fancy, fancy. Very cool. That's where it started in England. <laughs> yeah, many years, many years ago, I, I spent the day with him, and he had um, what was his name? What was her name? Pippa. Pippa, I can't remember her surname, but she's turned into quite a well-known comedian. She, she appears oh, really? on our radio. Yeah. Hmm. Wonderful. Great wonderful. voice. Fabulous, fabulous singer. She led all the singing, all the songs. John, sorry for interrupting anyway, you. I, I just want to say good friend of the show that you interviewed. I'm, I had to go. How did what go? The sorry? interview with uh, Bethany. Interview with Bethany. Oh, interview you, with Bethany. Yeah, sorry, you... You broke up a bit. No, yeah, Beth, Bethany's a charm, isn't she? She's a lovely dear. And um, we had a lot of fun, and it's now available to be watched as a podcast. Right. Uh, so I can I can put the link to you in the details underneath. Fantastic. We appreciate it. So that. I did that. And, of course, I, I every week I do my Global Atheist News show. So there's that that can also be viewed. And uh, I, I've also, this week, I've made a podcast, a video podcast with the, some of the other council members of Atheism UK. And what did we discuss this week? Um, wasn't morality. Uh, we have a different topic each week. And, and sometimes, unless it's in my memory, <laughs> I can't remember what it was. <laughs> it's just like this, but there's, uh, there's four, four of us and uh, we, we need some more diversity. We want nice. some women, and nice. we want some, some ethnically different people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. I appreciate that. I appreciate the call for it. It's better when it comes from, and I don't mean this in a bad way, it's better when it comes from old white men who are asking for that than the other way around who are trying to fight <laughs> into the door. So yeah, good, yeah. good on you. They, they, they complain that um, we're old white men. And yeah. But but I go back at them. I don't want to be an old white man. I want to be a young <laughs> brown man. It's not my fault. Okay. Uh, so, hey, you can do better than just clicking that link that I provide in the comments descriptions. You can actually subscribe to Free Thought Productions, right? Free Thought Productions, name of the YouTube channel. Check it That's out. It. Cool. George Space. Brown, second and one half and only one half. George Brown, how you been? Well, I've been getting older. Um, and I don't think that you all want to hear about old people's stuff, like my heart surgery or the fact that I have a bunion now, you know, which I reminded me more about the heart surgery. That's like you, the stakes went down in that conversation. Tell me about the heart surgery. What's going on? Well, the heart surgery was like two years ago, but I'm giving you an example. You know, when you get old, you get stuff happens all the time that is going to be boring to younger people and right. boring to the older people too. You know, uh, like um, so I go to the senior center every week here in my little town and they, uh, I pick up some lunches, and and so uh, I was invited to come back. Hey, we're open again. The pandemic's over. Yeah, all right. Come back. We got bingo. Bingo. Uh, yeah, good so, luck with that. Good luck with that. Yeah. So uh, I, I've been looking up some interesting stuff online that I want to share with you all. Um, first of all. Uh, in in the Guardian, I think it was yesterday or the day before. There was a piece on Ed, Edward Snowden about surveillance, yeah, and where it started big time back around 9/11 here in this country. And um, you know, I I have a feeling that Edward Snowden is going to go down in the history books as a great American patriot. Oh, interesting. But. What's going to happen to him in the meantime? I'm afraid, to be honest. Hey, why don't we uh, hold on that thought? Because I think it would be good if we had that when we were talking about 
<laughs> people and ideas, and I think that might lead. Okay, right but let me get on to the the second topic, and then I'll drop this. Um, uh, I've been reading up on Typhoid Mary. Okay. Whose whose real name I'm forgetting, but this was a person of good intent, I guess, or desperation, who who uh, was exercised her freedom. You know, like a lot of people want today. You know. George Brown, you got so much stuff on your mind. I just want to see how you were doing. And I got... I oh, got... I'm, I'm here. I'm alive. You know, okay. it's better okay. than the alternative. What else me, can I say? Let me introduce one last person for the show before we and before we delve into this, because I know you got a lot you want to say. Larry, I'm going to do a segment called What's on Your Shirt? What's on Your Shirt? Larry, tell me what's on your shirt. I don't know what's on your shirt, Larry. Tell me what's on your shirt. Well, it's just another Hawaiian shirt, but it's kind of pale. It's a... Uh... It's got plants and looks like structures, and it's drums. all uh, tropical stuff. Okay, but, okay, uh, it's yeah, it's along the I same think. vein as usual. It's summer. I, I wear uh, Hawaiian shirts all summer, and then I'll switch <laughs> to flannel in in the in the uh, winter, long sleeve flannel. So we'll get bored with that. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> the it more comes. we know, the more we know. Larry, I just went to a wedding this weekend. I had a really fun time, and uh, I just want to say it's like one of the first weddings i've been to since you know the whole covid things happened yeah uh everyone there vaccinated because it was all my team it was one of our members from our from our laboratory group so it was just good to see everybody outside uh, of the lab good. setting happy again just want yeah. to say john richards looked like you want to say something well before we leave the subject of shirts oh it's against my religion to wear a shirt with somebody else's name on it because you know that's free advertisement if they pay me, I'll wear their label. Okay. But I'd rather they wore mine, you know? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. We need a label for John Rich. Do you have an icon? Do you have a, uh, do you have a, a topographic icon of, in mind? A Free Thought Productions logo. <laughs> have to nice. Be into it, yeah. nice, nice, nice. So, guys, we are talking today about, uh, what is it? Good ideas from bad people or... From you know, are uh, what was it? Allegedly bad people, even I'd be, I'd be willing to entertain. And mm. so, is it possible to get good information, good details, good ideas, good philosophies from people who may be morally corrupt or under prosecution, or may be known for one very very bad thing that they've done, mm -hmm. etc. I think it's an interesting topic, and I think it's something that we were touching on yesterday that, or last week that we didn't have so much time to talk about. Dred, you want to start that? To, sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. I, I, I thought about this a lot because, uh, and not just about good ideas coming from bad people or morally bankrupt people, but sort of a, a, the cancel culture that's prevalent now where, uh, for instance, Benjamin Franklin is is taking a beating, you know, uh, in spite of the good things that uh, he did for some of the beliefs that he held at the time, which were, you know, common in society. Uh, the, the idea that, uh, you know, many of the founding fathers of America actually had slaves. Yeah. And that in this day and age, they're taking their, they want to take their faces off the money because of the ideas that they held at the time, in spite of the fact that they founded uh, an amazing country like America. And uh, so that's, I mean, that's where I was kind of coming from when you were talking about this. The idea that, um, and, and this is a, an ad hominem thing, right? Where uh, people conflate ideas with the character of the person who, who holds it, right? Um, all ideas must be kept secret or uh, kept separate. And that's what you criticize, not the person from yeah. whom the thing comes from. Sure. Well, that, that's kind of my belief anyway. Cool. We'll yeah. open up. John, you want to comment? On? Yeah, yeah. We, we've had the same thing. Uh, we had the, the statue of uh, Edward Colston toppled over in Bristol because... Uh, he was a statue was erected to him because he made the city of Bristol rich by trading in slaves. So this mm -hmm. is the problem, isn't it? Right. The what what classifies as bad changes. 
So we didn't see that as bad then, but we do now. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. What do you mean by we? Who's we when you say we didn't see it as bad? Because I can almost guarantee you the slaves saw it as bad. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I don't know why you say that, Tyrone. (laughs) No. So I'll throw out something kind of interesting. Maybe this is a hot topic, but I actually (laughs) think it's important to recognize people for who they are in in not the historical sense that we romanticize them to be, but as the actual people they were. And I think what we're getting now is a reckoning of like who these people actually were that we've so lauded over a period of time because the people who identified with them were also the ones who wrote the history books. And so when you have a figure like Ben Franklin, who, you know, has some great ideas, but you know, liberty is a good thing, but anyone can spouse the virtues of liberty, even if they're doing horrendous things in the background. Mm -hmm. And now that that's finally coming to light and people are actually talking about that, I don't see that as a bad thing. I see that as an evolution of our culture finally being yeah. willing to look at bad things from bad people. Oh, I, I totally saying, agree. Fantastic. Oh. We finally have the standards that we've been espousing since the beginning of time. Or nearly. But by the same token, we're getting by the same token, it doesn't erase the good things now. It doesn't. Liberty's right. still a good thing, right. but and we're I, now I doing another good right. thing, which is right. looking at people honestly. Absolutely. And I think that is the value. And mm-hmm. so when we have two options of like, well, should we rectify the fact that we used to like this slave master? And now that we know he's a slave master, we shouldn't have him on our money. It's like, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe we just can take the good stuff like the liberty and the foundations of having an honest government and get rid of the mascots that were, you know, enslaving people in the background at the same time too. Like we can do both. And one doesn't just uh, diminish the the virtues of the good qualities that are being presented. Mm -hmm. I also, I also, you know, I really do think, Richard, you meant it genuinely, but I have heard a lot of times I've had conversations with people being like, you know, well, that slavery was okay then, but now we know it's a bad thing. I'm like, even back then the slaves knew it was bad. <laughs> like there was no misunderstanding from the perspective of slaves that this was a bad thing. It's just right. that their opinions had no value because they weren't seen as human beings. They were seen mm-hmm. as property. And it went- that in its own right is a bad thing. The fact that we're all recognizing that's a bad thing only means that other people are finally understanding that it's a problem yes. too, yeah. which is a good thing, but it was a bad thing then too. And we should be, we yes. should, it's almost alarmist to not consider it as such. Right. You, you won't catch me defending slavery. <laughs> <laughs> if you have, a, 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 I mean, if you have an alternative opinion, I'm not here to just as a, of like the sole black eye on this cast trying to like sway it, but you know, I do get cancel culture and I understand that it could be problematic in certain senses, especially yeah, yeah. if it starts to overswell and take exactly. away the good things that were being per- perpetrated by bad people. I think it's important. Yeah. I see you, John. I see you, George. We'll separate the two, but I think the fact that we are recognizing that bad people can say good things is a good thing. Mm-hmm. And we should just recognize bad, yeah. but the good is still good but bad people. And I think that's overall a net good. Mm-hmm. Hopefully I'm making clear with that. Yeah. George Brown, what do you think? Well, I, I have a, a question on my mind. I was wondering if other people have the same question. Exactly what is cancel culture? What does ah. that mean? Larry, why don't you uh, step in? It's been a while. What do, you, what do you mean? What do you think cancel culture is? I'm not the big authority on it. I have a marginal understanding of it at best. But my my idea of it is that if uh, if somebody does something that the society thinks is bad, they might, uh, let's say he has business, they might boycott his business, that type of thing. Uh, Dread? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, um, it, it, it's like, for instance, if you start taking someone's books off the shelf because they held an unpopular idea, um, when the books are not about that unpopular idea, it's, you know, you could be a, a biologist and you came up with some really great ideas, but you held a belief about, uh, you were a misogynist or something, or, you know, had a bad marriage or, or whatever, but oh. sorry, that's a fly bug. In there. Um, <laughs> I didn't know if you're but... just advocating in, with certain, <laughs> at certain points. So. But, uh, uh, These but... are weird points that he's enunciating. <laughs> uh, talking like an Italian, right? Um, <laughs> but recently there was, uh, there was a spacecraft, um, that, the James Webb uh, telescope. Yeah. And there is um, a faction 
of people who are trying to, uh, you know, um, say that he's not worthy of having a spacecraft named after him for some behavior uh, he displayed, possibly displayed uh, during his, his life. And that, uh, and NASA, of course, is taking this claim seriously. So at what point does, uh, you know, is a, to what extent is a person's life uh, scrutinized by the public uh, just because you want to name something after them. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like sure. pretty soon you can't name anything like Huygens, for instance, or um, any of the spacecraft that have that bear somebody's name. Hmm. You know, if we start looking into their lives and scrutinizing them and then renaming the spacecraft because uh, we didn't like a particular idea they held, oh. um, that, that's a form of cancer culture right there. John, yeah, would yeah. you mind espousing on cancel culture? What do you think it is, and, and what's your? Well, experience? it's it's what Dred says. It's what Larry said, and and in addition, it's um, no platforming. When people want to express their maybe contentious views, not giving them a microphone. No, I think mm. that's that's part of cancel culture, and it's a bad idea because we should let all the bad views come out so that we can argue against them. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Absolutely, that is interesting. Uh, but, but it's fundamental problem, to free speech. So exactly. I'll, exactly. So, yeah. so I will throw out, um, so I may not have the best definition of cancel culture, but I do think it is about deplatforming, right? And mm -hmm. I think it goes under the concept of um, not everyone's entitled to have a platform, right? Or y y you can say whatever you want, but that doesn't mean that you're not beyond the consequences of your speech. Of and course. so if we've determined that your speech causes what I would call needless harm, or if yeah. we put you in a position where you represent us and you're criminally going against what we've, you know, asked you to do as part of your body, but for some, you know, corrupt reason, we can't get rid of you and you're actually causing needless harm. Maybe censorship in that capacity is something that we can, or terms of service is something that we can all agree these are the conditions in which we would take away your platform and do so rightfully as part of like a, a society. Yeah. And it's a nebulous idea because it's a novel idea in the, in the grand scheme of humanity. Like cancel culture is like in the, in the capacity that we can do it now and the power and the speed that we can do it now is like this new thing and a new power and unpower, new powers that are often unchecked can quickly exacerbate into themselves into this is no longer a good thing, it's immediately a bad thing, or it's a yeah. bad tool. So how do yeah. we manage this new functionality that we have? Well, uh, all we, right. we actually, I, don't, I don't know about the states because I'm not there, but uh, huh. we, have, we have laws in, in this country against hate speech and raising people to harm others, calling for others to be victimized mm -hmm. by the audience. It's, uh, it's not allowed here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think we have, so in my head, like a lot of the platforms that people use to espouse ideas, YouTube, Twitter, et cetera, have strict oh. terms of service agreements. Right. And oh. in those are codified rules of what they will accept and what they won't accept. And the means yeah. of repercussions that'll happen if any of those terms are violated. And oh. it's only when they are enacted or enforced that sometimes people have like, well, that's against free speech. It's like, well, this is a private company that is espousing specifically what they yeah. would want that someone clicked and said, yes, I accept these terms of service. And if they don't like it, yeah. they can make their own service platform, but you're not entitled to do that on my contract as a private company, right? A lot of people are raising their hands. I would like to see George because he had something he wanted to say back and then maybe we can talk about this. George Brown, what do you got? I forgot topic number two. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Larry? Uh, uh, number one is um, we have... We have a concept, I don't know if it's enshrined in American law or certainly a legal argument. Yeah. You can't cry fire in a crowded theater. <laughs> I wonder why. So, yeah. so you, you, have, um, you have some sort of basis in, con in, in public discourse for not allowing unlimited free speech. And, and it's kind of like what you said, Wombat. Um, uh, there, if there are consequences, if there are negative consequences to somebody else, um, that that person who, who violates that your wholeness, let's say, is responsible for those consequences. That's fair. 
Larry? Yeah, um, I think they call it uh, inciting to violence. You can't, you're not allowed to do that. I'm not familiar with the law structure around that. Incitement, uh, you yeah. can't, you can't, uh, you can't incite people to go out and, you know, hang people or burn buildings or whatever. Yeah. Incite uh, to violence. It's against, yeah, the, it's against the law here too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dred? Yeah, so I, I was just going to say that um, I think this is moving away from what cancel culture is. Sure. Um, and I think, I mean, I've had this happen to me on, on Facebook and in, in my community where I've said something that, uh, you know, I've chatted something that uh, was not uh, liked by a certain group. And then I've been personally attacked and canceled out and, yeah. and shut down essentially just by the, the mob, you know, who, oh. who suddenly, you know, now decides that I am a bad person right. at root and that anything I say is worthy of attack and uh, yeah. abuse and all the rest of it. Just to throw this out, I'm thinking of it as like a spectrum that's very ambiguous right now because yeah. this is like a new muscle that the internet's using it for the most part. Yeah. Right. And on one side you have, Hey, I just made a bad joke 10 years ago. Please don't fire me for this. Like this it's, wasn't even something I genuinely meant. I'm not even that person yeah. anymore. I don't even mm -hmm. remember posting that. Like what the, what's, what's going on here. And then also oh. now where it's like the president's actively causing people to rush into the Capitol right. building with Confederate exactly. flags, yes. completely destroy our democracy and possibly threaten the lives of our senators. And it's like <clears> when <throat> he gets blocked on Twitter, it's like, that's cancel culture. I'm like, you shouldn't be on Twitter. <laughs> you yeah. shouldn't have yeah. this ability. You should have been impeached like four years ago. Like it's right. crazy. Absolutely. I, Absolutely. There's a, there's a wide spectrum. And <laughs> unfortunately it seems to be hitting everybody in disproportionate amounts where some places I feel like it's needed. In some cases I feel like, Ooh, that was taken way too far. And I feel like if it was just more explicit rules of engagement, that was just like something you can like, well, what's acceptable. What's not acceptable. Where's the line. Where's not the line. Mm -hmm. And I think we're still in the process of figuring that out. John, I'm sorry for taking up your time. What's up? Well, no, no, fine. Uh, we've, we've jailed several people in this country, uh, Muslims for yep. calling for, for non-Muslims to be victimized right. and anti-Muslims for calling Muslims to be victimized, you know. But the problem here is who decides? Because it's, it's always up to who happens to be in control at the time. Imagine this. If Darwin had not been born and lived in Hampshire, UK, if he'd been born in, where should we say, Alabama, Ah, we'd have a hard time. Do you, think, do, do you think that he would have been able to get his ideas launched? Right. Even in England, it took him 20 years yeah, to do and that was, after and he formed them. It's very hard for him to do even so. And he, it's not like he wasn't the subject of ridicule immediately afterwards, right? And Well, and he wasn't, actually. The ridicule came later. He was, for the first 20 years. That's literally the sentence I just said, John. Oh. <laughs> sorry. And it's time to, to break. Uh, okay, we're at the sorry, bottom sorry. of the half hour. Uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. And we're going to be back in just about, I don't know, as long as it takes. Sure. <laughs> I'll see you in a little bit. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour, second half. We're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, I'm Daughter Five, and this is Sunday morning, September 5th, 2021. Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville for a minute. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 19th year. We have over 1,000 members, and we have weekly Zoom meetings during COVID, but we're also meeting in person out on the deck at the Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria in Knoxville's Old City. That's every Tuesday evening, right after work around 5.30 to 8 or whenever. You can find ASK on Facebook, meetup.com, or just go to knoxvilleatheist.org, or even just Google it. Uh, it's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start one! Right. Uh, Wombat, where do we want to pick up? We're talking about, can we get good ideas from bad people? I think the general consensus is it is possible to abstract to because just because you came up with an idea doesn't mean you own it or it came from you. It's 
freely available to everyone. It's just a bad guy probably found it first. And it doesn't mean that if we recognize that that person was bad, it takes away anything from the good things that they found. And so let's focus on the good things and be aware that we can see people more honestly as human beings. Maybe that makes us all more right. relatable. Perfect. John, what do you think? Because nobody's facing the same. Or really evil. <laughs> John Richards, what do you think? We're facing the same problem in reverse here because it, we're up against what is bad mm -hmm. and what is. We were up against what is what is bad in the previous half, but now we're up against what is good. Because I can tell you a story of a certain um, English general who invented this new kind of bomb, which when it you could throw it, and when it exploded, little pieces of metal went hurtling through the air and injured and maimed a large number of people in the vicinity. Now, at the time, <laughs> that was that was thought to be a good thing depending on whether you were on the receiving end or the, the, the throwing end. And this, this general, his name was Shrapnel. General Shrapnel. Get out of here. Huh. Was his Brilliant. name literally Shrapnel? That's so yes, cool. That's yes, really it was. Shrapnel. I had no idea where that name came from. That's great. Yeah. Well, that's, that's like where you're born always. and your name's like peanut butter sauce. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be making something really good one day. You yeah, know yeah, it. Right. Or, or your last name is Crapper. Well, let me, let me think. <laughs> Thomas Crapper. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let, let me take this story a little further because sure. quite recently, um, a pub in a town near me was being redeveloped and it was looking for a new name because it, it was going out as something completely different from its previous image. And it discovered that General Shrapnel was born and lived in this town. Mm. They didn't want to call the pub Shrapnel Inn. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have attracted very many customers. So they looked yeah. him up. And he, he's got a, his, his, his first name was Henry. So that pub became called the General Henry. And very few people know the actual history to it. Okay. <laughs> John, I love all the UK pieces of advice that you give me. That I have more trivia about the UK now than I've ever had in my life. And I feel like I can surprise so many people if they got like a, mm -hmm. a, a scouse accent and be like, hey, you know about Henry, that little pub over there? It's like, yeah, guess what? <laughs> guess who that guy is? It's like, yeah, perfect. I guess I'll have to work on the Canadian version. Oh, tell me, tell me. Dred, do you have examples of uh, uh, people well, I'm that... sure I could come up with them. Okay, okay. Uh, would you like to share one? I, I don't have one yet. Okay, fair enough. I Larry, do you... <laughs> Larry, do you have an example of perhaps, you know, a bunch of good ideas that were discovered or your, you know, <laughs> words by a particularly person that we're realizing may not as be as good as we thought. Well, I didn't when I started the show, but I, so I went online and I looked up a few. Um, the inventor of the transistor, uh, who also in oh that guy cause uh, helped invent Shockley? the computer, uh, William Shockley uh, was apparently a big fan of eugenics and a very big racist. So uh, he has some good ideas as far as technology goes, but as society goes, it's not too good. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say this too. Here's one of my favorite ones. Uh, Han or Faber, the Faber process. Are you guys familiar with them? Let's see. I know. Yeah. The no. so there was He's the uh, pencil guy. Uh, the pencil. There's a guy oh. named Fritz Haber, and he yeah. okay. he is the guy, reason why we exist right now. Because before there was not enough nitrogen to make agriculture fertilizer to feed more than 2 billion people on the planet. And if you hadn't checked recently, there's way more than 2 billion people on the planet. And the reason for that is because we found a way to take air, the nitrogen and air, and precipitate it into a, a form that can actually be used to make plants grow, yeah. right? Yeah. And plants need DNA, DNA needs nitrogen. So you need to figure out how to get the nitrogen in the air into the plants. He figured that out. The thing is, and it saved so many lives, kept so many people from dying from hunger, and our population has exploded ever since. But the thing is, Guy was outright probably one of the most notorious Nazis of all time. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Right? yeah. Made well, chemical yeah. weapons like the, we yeah, the yeah. one of my first jobs was getting rid of the chemical weapons using the same formulas that he devised. Like we were breaking down chemical weapons as part of like America's treaty with other company or countries. Okay. Larry, yeah. one one last thing. Also stabbed his wife to death. Uh, tried oh. to hop around away from it. 
was a total huckster try to sold making gold from seawater, which was like not the best, you know, like, <laughs> just, just the worst guy, worst, worst guy. Good idea though. And I'm willing to abstract that away because you know, for as many millions of people, he's responsible for directly killing in the most violent and harmful ways possible. He's also mm. pot potentially responsible for his, through his discovery, for the, the livelihoods and the existence of billions of people after the fact. And I'm not saying one cancels out the other. I'm just saying just because a, a bad guy discovered something doesn't make that thing he discovered a bad thing, mm -hmm. right? And I'm willing to abstract the two. Larry, what's up? Well, you mentioning him made me think of Werner von Braun, who uh, helped engineer the first rockets that we had. And if it hadn't been for him and his, his thoughts on that, we may have not have made it to the moon in 69 and then have our space program as far along as we have. Yeah. Well, so but he was thing. the one that created the V2. For the right. V2. He was a, a Nazi uh, yeah. Yeah. rocket engineer. Yeah. yeah. Dread. So we're going we're gonna to come to Nobel now, aren't we? Oh, let's do Nobel. That's an interesting <laughs> one. Yeah, that's a very interesting one. Yeah. yeah. Because I know my <laughs> yeah 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 exactly. So he he was um, a bit embarrassed about the the way his, his invention was being used, wasn't he? So this is why he set up the foundation to award people for peace, amongst other things. What foundation is that, John Richards? That would be the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> ah, you got to get that peace in there. You got to get that peace in there. Because they were thinking, let's just call it the Nobel Prize. No, you got to get peace in there. I'm doing this for a reason. What, what, what was his away. original intention for uh, explosives? Oh, uh, he was. what he did was he, he tamed nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin was a very unstable substance. And he worked out that if you mix it up with very finely ground clay called yeah. Kieselgur, German word, then um, maybe Norwegian, I don't know. But then it would be safe to carry around in these sticks, you know, like mm -hmm. we've all seen Dynamite. sticks. We should yeah, totally exactly. use for making towns, renovating like unusable yeah. land. And then military mm -hmm. is like, hey, we could use this for our thing too. You want some money? Yeah. And he's like, I like money. And he made a lot of money. And then at yeah. the end of the day, he's like, I don't like what my legacy might be. Yeah. What can I do as a marketing campaign? Yeah. And they said, Nobel Peace Prize. Interesting yeah. thing. Oh, go for it, Look, John. What, what prompted him to do that was an article appeared in the death column of the newspaper <laughs> announcing that he'd passed away. Now, this was actually a mistake. It was his brother who'd mm. passed away, but it misnamed him. Yes. So, so anyway, he took fright about this because he could see that what his legacy was going to be like because the, the, yeah. yeah, the description they wrote wasn't very flattering. Right, so, right. Like uh, he's uh, his discovery responsible for like the deaths of like X Y Z number of people. And he's just like yeah, yeah. bad thing. Am I a good person? Oh. How can I turn this around? Then, you know, Nobel is actually kind of a good story because it's almost as if you can see the mechanics of a guy being like, how do I course correct this? How do I try to inspire it? Mm -hmm. And again, it's ideas. And I'm not trying to say that he's a good or bad person. In my head, it's more of like the invention is absolutely has great utility but it could be used by nefarious means. It could be used for war. It could be used for, you know, segregation, punishment, et cetera, but also useful things too. And so yeah. it's a great quagmire of nuance. And I love yeah. well, people like this and topics well, like this. Is, this is the nature of science and technology, isn't right. it? What, what, what they do, what those two aspects do is facilitate. They make things easier. So for example, a tin opener or a can opener makes yeah. it easier to open a can. And I need one of those. Hmm. And a gun makes it easier to kill people. And I don't need one of those. <laughs> True. And like, it's the same way as like the guy who invented a blade, like a knife blade, like that could be used for so many different things. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he's, oh. is he responsible for every single use of it? That's it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say so, but I think it's an interesting thing that, you know, Nobel saw that and saw what can I do to course correct made the yeah. Nobel Peace Prize. And here's an interesting thing. A good number of people who get, Nobel Peace Prize tend to also be war criminals. If we want to talk about nuance here too. And I think <laughs> it is a particularly interesting thing to be like, I'm thinking of a U.S. president won the Nobel Peace Prize also categorical war criminal, like at the same time too, Theodore Roosevelt, uh, one of them, for example, probably one of the most popular examples, because when they got the Nobel Peace Prize, it was sort of like 
the committee didn't know what the magnitude of the award was. They thought by yes. giving it to him that it was sort of a promise that he wouldn't go to war and be and treat the Native Americans here more nicely. Yes. Totally didn't, but it totally accepted the award and was like, and I'm going to put my face on a mountain next to Abraham Lincoln <laughs> and George Washington. It's like, oh, this guy is really, really bad. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah that's a narcissist right there. Huh? That is like probably the one of the worst people that you could have given an award like that to. Yeah, I'm not oh. sure he actually did the sculpting. <laughs> Guess what he, no, he but did he did not. use dynamite. He heard that workout. Yeah. 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 Uh so George Brown, we were talking today about Edward Snowden. Do you think uh you said he thought you think eventually we'd see him as a patriot? Do you think the things that he did were good? And what do you think about him personally? Well, uh... I think he may be a pretty complex person, and I, I really don't know. Uh, I, I know that he made a, he made quite a transition in his own mind. Right. It's all I can say, and I mean he was, he was part of the surveillance machine to begin with. Yes. And then I think he he realized the the, how would I put it the, the conceptual devastation that it would cause if left unchecked. Correct. And so that's what is motivating him now. And he's he's had to get out of the country, uh, you know, to, to save himself. And look where he's had to go to do it. I know, right? <laughs> you know, what it's, I... it's, this is paradox on top of paradox, you know. What I wanted to highlight was people are complex and when the more you delve into these situations the more complexity is there but that in my head is where the true thinking and weighing begins for like a person to adjust or assess good bad maybe we don't need those terms maybe those are just smaller labels that we can put on small aspects of a much more complex issue and so like when we you know this probably goes back to the benjamin franklin sort of situation where it's like we have forefathers that we only think of in good terms right but we know that there are people and we know people are complex and i feel like we deserve to at least have that resolution of complexity because in that light we get to understand the person better and be able to understand other people in the future better maybe that makes us more compassionate empathetic and knowledgeable beings when it comes to assessing humanity and that may give us terms to appreciate flaws in people at a at a higher you know fidelity when we know we don't have these altruistically perfect uh standards that we're comparing everybody to like when we say hey jesus had problems like there's you know jesus in the book of the bible has you know he's prone to anger he's judgmental he literally thinks he's the son of god right like these are not people you'd want to invite to a party but yet he's the standard that we judge most people to in terms of philosophy and, and being yeah. a good person i think if we just were willing to look at the complexity of humanity we'd be able to appreciate humanity more and that'd be helpful for everybody george well in the first half um, the term cancel culture came up and we batted it around a little bit. And I, I just want to bring up something, another side to what we've been talking about, which is the pushback. You know, we, we've been talking about the, the desire to understand the backstory behind the legends. And in fact, we've been getting a lot of pushback lately from the right about this. You know, and 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 the attempt to um, to suppress what what you want, you know, yeah. suppress the truth c coming out. We want the truth. But, Can you but give us some specifics who, on that? What you're talking well, right about? right here in our state of Tennessee, I think mm -hmm. there's been an argument within the state government, the the legislators, and and the uh, governor about textbooks in schools. But maybe I'm thinking about Texas right this no, moment. I'm um, sure Tennessee is a guilty. Yeah, it's not as far. It's not as far as you would But you know that 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 there certainly are some black folks here who want to open the door to to the truths of of history, of what is really what really has happened. And, and talking this, about CRT, then uh, what's that book? What's critical race theory? Yes, no, no, no. that's. Uh, so I, I actually would say that it's way beyond that. Like the Civil War, the, the, fix, right. the reconstruction after Civil War played a big part in what was being taught in schools to rectify 
you know, a lot of the inhumanities that were occurring during that time mm. and making sure that they glosses over a lot of aspects of really terrible things America have done overall to paint this picture, picture that's, you know, very picturesque of what America actually is. And that's still in the history books. And it's weird how if you open up a history book in America for high school, it goes to like, jump straight to world war two. And you're like, isn't was, what was there a world war one? It's like, no, 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 it's basically that. And then, oh. you know, you have Columbus visiting world war two. And then basically now <laughs> <laughs> dread, I saw you raising your hand. What's up. Yeah. <clears throat> it was actually when, uh, when you brought up uh, Jesus there, um, just recently I've been watching a lot of uh, the genetically modified skeptic, uh, and Pologia is another, uh, YouTuber, uh, really good stuff. Um, but uh, recent ones I was watching were the uh, non-canonical gospels, such as the the Book of Judas and and the Gospel of, of Thomas. Wow. Um, and uh, you know, when it comes to um, you know um, sculpting uh, history uh, to the benefit of whatever image you're trying to portray, yes. those are great cases. Uh, where if it was common knowledge, uh, what were in those books and how they characterized Jesus, uh, people would not think of him as all love and Correct. happiness. You know, he's, he's, he's like a, a bratty little kid with superpowers, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> killing people and then raising them from the dead just because, you know, one pushed past him or something like that. And yeah, uh, just crazy pretty, stuff. pretty crazy stuff. Yeah. So it was, it was enlightening to see that. So, we had to uh, talk about Schrodinger's today because we had a correction of a misinterpretation of history that I had because I was given one mm. with an agenda, the agenda being selling dog food commercials, right? And then you had sent me the, the true sources and the citations and I was able to look that up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was reading through the history of Schrodinger. I was like, man, this guy is boring. He has friends like Einstein, but gosh, this like, the other version that I had was so <laughs> much more memorable and exciting and fun. Right. And, but this one's just plain applesauce man who just comes up with math formulas. It's just like yeah. boring, but it helped me understand the truth better. And I feel like a lot of the history that we have, regardless of wherever we were born or raised was given to us with an agenda. And that yeah. tends to be the case for yeah. everybody, but we all yeah. have different agendas and that's a lot of reasons it drives a lot of conflict. And so what I'd say is, um, it is beneficial for us to have the desire for truth. And through that truth, if we make adjustments after the fact, after we have a better, clearer picture of what humanity was, that is in the interest of the truth and good. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Obviously cancel culture could take it too far. And I think if we don't espouse like good guidelines for, for conduct for people, I think we, we fall just as susceptible for over correcting if we don't make the grounds for why we correct in the first place explicitly clear. But I do value the idea of, I have this idea, it's a good idea, but it was made by a bad person. I just don't wanna associate this bad person with this good idea anymore. I think that's totally fine because there's so many standards of good people who can say the exact same thing that we could look up to if we need role models in that capacity and why not uh, adjust as needed. Larry, what's up? Oh, did I, you raise I didn't your hand? raise my hand, no. George, I did you raise your hand? Okay. I did, yes. Um, yeah, go for it, George. Dread next. You know, I, I, the older I get, the more interested in psychology I get and um, the, the need to, to understand why people do what they do, including my, my own self. You know, this is a major goal of my own is, is just, just to, to understand me, you know, that, that's a major undertaking. And why do I do what I do? And, and so uh, the one thing that is occurring to me while we discuss uh, our topic for today, good ideas from bad people, is the pushback, the resistance. And, and people, I think, have a tendency to want to cling to what is familiar to them. It's comforting what's familiar. And when we go beyond that point to many people, it, it feels threatening. And that's why they want to come back, restore what was, push those, those people away because they are different. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and that's, you know, that, that's what I want to offer right now. Yeah. 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 
John. Guys, we, we talked about Mount Rushmore. And uh, if I know this isn't very good radio, but maybe it'll drive people to our, our other sites, our YouTube site or something. But I, I've got a picture of the new Mount Rushmore that I'd like to share with you. <laughs> Can you let me put this on screen? Yeah, go for it, go for it, go for it. Go. This yeah, is the one it. with Homer Simpson. <laughs> it's still white men. Oh, well. That's awesome. Good. Better luck next time, guys. <laughs> no, who are they? You got to say who they are. That is yep. Mount Rational Moore. So who are the people on it? Well, Carl well, Sagan, is... Daniel Dennett, yeah. James uh, Randi. Mr. Hitchens. No, not Daniel James Randi, sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah, this one is... Um, Bertrand Russell. Oh, so, right. There you go. I, so I'll have a hot take. It would be good. All these things that these guys are espousing, believe it or not, are not the are not they are not the first people to espouse the things they that they have espoused. Of if you course. were to go into other cultures or history from other countries and find, oh, Egyptians were saying this exact same thing. We don't care about black people in Mesopotamia. It's the white people are saying it now that are that we care about. It's like, okay, that's fine. But Chinese were saying all of these things in let in literature for like thousands of years ago it's like yeah but these guys have like really nice pictures that we can put on mountains i feel like we don't need to have to necessarily so associate four white faces of men to to have the the face of rationality and we should be careful in my head of that immediate association is, is as mm -hmm. even as fun as it could be dread what's up um you were talking about uh you know the Schrodinger thing. Um, yeah. How, how the the story you initially heard was much more interesting. <laughs> yeah. And that it, you eventually came around to the boring story, and that sort of justifies, in a way, of having a, a uh, an incorrect appreciation of. I have the appreciation for it, but I like the truth more. And right you move. Yes. And 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 I think that's absolutely valid, if you're a critical thinker. Mm. For you know our I mean? audience, and I think it's explain. it's important to uh, continually help and assist people to become more critical in their own thinking, uh, not only about their own ideas and the ideas of others, but their right. their selves as well. So, yeah, um, that's something that because because like uh, like George says, uh, we 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 become very enamored by our beliefs, Correct. and uh, and often. Um, without any inspiration to believe or think otherwise, um, you could go your entire life thinking that uh, uh, Schrodinger was being made fun of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even if that made me feel better, it wasn't true, which could right. lead me to be wrong about other things in the future. Right. So I will take the boring truth over a sexy <laughs> lie any day, but I still like the sexy lie to know that it's a lie. Because right. that was very funny. I still like my Spider-Man comic books. What can I tell you? <laughs> George Brown, and then we close up the show. George Brown, what's up? For our audience and me, please tell us what Schrodinger is all about. We'll tell you next <laughs> week. Yeah, that's yeah, a, next week. That's <laughs> a, that's a story. Story. I need to know the <laughs> definition of what you're talking about. It's yeah, we're at the end of the show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's the topic here? Hey, we'll go, we'll go into it. Everybody else, uh, John Richards, where can we find you at? Not at non-locality. You wouldn't find me there. You can find me at what's it called? Oh yeah, Free Thought Productions there YouTube you channel. Cool. Dread Pirate, where can we find you at? I'm on YouTube at Mind Pirate, M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. -E. Click and subscribe. I live stream this uh, when I can on Sundays at 8 a.m. PST. Very, very nice. Larry Rhodes, where's your channel at? If anyone's seeing this on me, we're at Let's Chat on YouTube. Uh, <clears throat> you can find me by going uh, to search for Doubter5 or Larry Rhodes. That's R-H-O-D-E-S. My own content is on Digital Free Thought. Dot com. Uh, be sure to click on the blog button for radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. If you have any questions for the show, send them to ask an atheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you're a member of clergy, a preacher, pastor, or priest who has no longer believes in the claims of religion, you can find help at the Clergy Project. That's clergyproject.org. If you're watching this
us on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been the Digital Freethought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it, enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Say bye, bye everybody. Bye. So I heard a voice in my head that told me atheism was true. <laughs> <laughs>